God bless you. Pastor Jeff, another daily word, capital W. Jesus was, is, and always will be the word, the eternal word. And I want to share with you today one of my favorite Psalms, 121. And then I think it relates to the calling that we have in our life as a member of the royal priesthood. But let me read, if I may, 121. Psalm 121, this is in the New King James. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hello. <laughs> yeah, this is his universe. It's not yours or mine. It's not any of the politicians. It's not the people scrambling around today trying to figure out what to do in the world without him. He is Lord God Almighty, and he is the one source of all truth and wisdom. So my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Verse 3, Psalm 121. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you, that's the key word here, keeps, he keeps you, will not slumber. Yeah, we have an Abba Father, we have the Holy Spirit, we have Yeshua, the Messiah, there on duty. We have a high priest who's interceding at the right hand of God for us every single minute. Call on him at all times. He's your friend, capital F. So he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel, thank God, Israel's protected, the chosen people. Jesus is soon returning to the Mount of Olives. Israel is being kept. He who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. How cool is that? Not only is he keeping Israel, he is keeping you and me. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord, now look at this. He's going to use a word three different times in two verses. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Protection, preserve, preservation. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your, your soul. The Lord shall preserve you're going out and you're coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. What a promise. Lord calls me on reading that many times every evening before I go to sleep. <sighs> like a little kid, I used to sing or say the song and, or say the words, um, dear God, if I die before I wake, you know, um, take my soul, take my soul, and um, protect me. Words to that effect. If I may die and, and I'm not awake, then take my soul. It's yours to take. Or words to that effect. My, my sister would have memorized it better <laughs> than I. But look at how this role of the Lord as our keeper now gives us this opportunity to become all that he calls us to be, talking to you and me. First Peter chapter 2, starting in verse 9, it says, But you and I are a chosen generation. We are chosen by him. This is the time for you to be alive. This is your Esther moment. This is Nehemiah. This is Daniel. This is every one of those persons who were devoted to the advancing the kingdom of the living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, this is your time. Put your name in there. You are a chosen generation. You're, you, watching this, are a member of a chosen generation, and you have a call on your life. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. A royal, we are a royal priesthood, it says, a holy nation. He already sees you and me as a holy nation. His own special people. Well, the one that keeps you, Psalm 121, loves you so much, loves me so much that he's keeping us. We are his special people that we make what? What's the point of it? That we can proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
verse 10, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. Yeah, that's true. You and I were born children of wrath. We were lost in the world until by a miracle we found the Lord. Someone ministered the truth to us and a light bulb went on and we realized, oh my gosh, I've been following the wrong group. I need to repent and believe that indeed Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead, and I want him to be my Lord. At that point, the Holy Spirit comes in and you are now a member of the people of God. So who were once not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So these last two verses that I'm going to read today, verse 11, Beloved, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Well, it's all about repentance every day, right? <clears throat> having, this is a good one, verse 12, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, which they will be doing more and more, you're a Christian, you don't fall into their category of people that they like, they, many detest you. In short order, we may well be subject to persecution and, and death. Nonetheless, have your conduct honorable among the Gentiles that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe. How do you get to good works? Through repentance. Glorify God in the day of visitation. And one other last piece I want to share with you the power of repentance. In, Matt, in Mark chapter 1, verse 17, in the Amplified Version, that may not be as eloquent as the King James or the New King James, nonetheless, there's some added words that they add into that increase our understanding of the word. And they do that with the word repent. So go to a Bible site like BibleGateway.com, look under the Amplified I think it's the Amplified. It might be the message version, but I think it's the Amplified. And they, they spend a little time talking about or writing about the word repentance. And it includes this key piece. Repent includes discovering God's call on your life. And here's the truth. The more you repent, we're coming up to a day of repentance globally on May 1st, 2020 more you and I repent, the more you, it's like peeling an onion, you get down to the calling, unique calling that God has for your life. Yes, you're part of the royal priesthood, but in that priesthood, you have a unique calling. It's almost like your voice, your shofar is unique, and of course, the Lord can hear your voice. It's different than mine. Each one he loves. So he loves your calling, but to get to the deep joy of knowing the call in your life that the Lord has just for you, that only you can do, releasing enormous amounts of joy. Follow his path of repentance every day. The more you peel away the old sin strongholds, the more you will get to the call that he has on your life this very day. Hope that blesses you. Until next time, Pastor Jeff.